Okay, go ahead. Um, all right, my mic is open. All right, hello everyone. Um, some may, uh, may have read the news article about me and uh, my contact with OneCoin. I'm not a OneCoiner, uh, but I uh, have been following this case for a long time. I'm uh, working with the authorities and um, there are many authorities looking into OneCoin right now, uh, internationally, uh, both in the States and in Europe. So um, this is a, a very, very, very scary deal right now um, because you've actually paid money into an organization uh, that is known for uh, at the highest levels of, uh, of hiding that money and using that for uh, activities that are not legal, uh, which in turn turns, in worst case, you all to uh, criminals uh, because you have funded this organization. But let me talk about the blockchain for a second. Uh, they contact me on September 29th uh, and asked me to exchange their SQL server for a blockchain. This is September 29, 2016. And as you all know, on October 1st, two days later, Ruja started the new blockchain. I was the one that they contacted for developing a new blockchain. So why would they contact me for developing a new blockchain when two days after their contact with me, um, they're announcing the new blockchain start? And the way that they proposed this uh, was not through a technical person, so he had very little information about uh, what kind of systems they had, but he was told it was an SQL server, and that is my profession is turning SQL servers into blockchains. That's what I do for a living, and I do this for many, many big companies. So it wasn't by chance that they got a hold of me. Uh, they had done their research. Um, and um, they, uh, they proposed a, a large salary. It's not the salary that has come out in the newspapers. I know it's some, somewhere it said like two and a half million dollars. This is not true. Um, but it was a large sum of money. And I actually did have my doubts as a human being that maybe I should just turn a blind eye to this and do the work and get the money. Um, but going through all the the information that I have gathered uh, and then seeing the people that are above Ruja, because they are a bunch of people above Ruja, uh, and their history is not good, not good at all. Um, and the way this is gonna trickle down uh, I believe, and the authorities, I have the authorities' uh, thoughts about this too, is that it's a major, not Ponzi scheme or uh, a pyramid scheme, but a criminal network. It's money is being spent into this network that is going out on the, on the very top side of this, uh, this scheme is being used for criminal activities. So you're supporting a criminal organization, which is really, really scary. Um, I have not talked to the English police that you have talked to, uh, but I've talked to the Germans. Uh, I have talked to uh, uh, the States and I have talked to several other uh, countries, which I can't disclose because this is uh, going on as we speak. And someone's gonna hit very, very hard down on, on cracking down the one, one coin and one life um, set up very soon. Okay, I'll let you get your comments in. Thank you. Thanks. Please ask Bjorn to talk about one coin blockchain and transaction not recorded in it. Okay, I'll just mute. 
Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. I'm back on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've done, uh, and I'm saying we because I'm currently involved with three different groups that don't even know about each other. Uh, I'm in all three groups, uh, and it's basically what's called white hat hackers uh, that uh, do work for anonymous and do work for different uh, hacking groups for checking security for banks and so on. Um, all three groups have received uh, some accounts, one coin accounts that that were supplied to me. Uh, I have about 60 accounts that I can test on, and we've done multiple tests for mining, for uh, sending just transactions back and forth, and so on. And the strange thing is there's no connection to any of the transaction that we performed, and we performed hundreds of transactions. None of them are recorded in the blockchain, in the visible blockchain that we can see. So the visible blockchain in the One Life website is uh, has nothing to do with reality. There is nothing there that is transparent. There's no, absolutely no transactions I have ever been um, able to, to trace back or find back in that uh, blockchain. And we've done extensive testing for about two months now. Um, so there's some videos out on it. Uh, I um, uh, have shared my findings with the authorities uh, and uh, they are uh, super aware. One of the things that I saw right off the bat was that when I did a transaction, I didn't get a, a, a transaction ID, which is expected from any cryptocurrency, but also I didn't get a timestamp. Uh, not in minutes or seconds or even hours. I only got the date of the transaction, which which was strange for me because I've been working with so many different cryptocurrencies and uh, none of them, absolutely no one of them uh, has that little information on the transactions. Uh, I would say 99.9% .9 of the uh, cryptocurrencies that I've been working with have a transaction ID and a timestamp at, at minutes, days, uh, or minutes, uh, date, and, and seconds. And even some of them have nanoseconds on when the transaction is being performed. But everyone here can try a small transaction from one account to another account, just send one, one coin or, or something, and do a specific number. Do... Uh, uh, one one or uh, one point one two two three three four four something like that. So you so you see the amount and you can't get confused with the amount, and then go back to the blockchain and read the blocks from before you sent the transactions, and then just sit and read um, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, twenty blocks ahead uh, and watch it and. The response that I've gotten from some one coiners is that, well, our blockchain is retroactive. This is not, this is impossible because a blockchain runs in real time. The data being displayed is always what's happening right now. So uh, the transactions cannot be approved. They can be pending and not be in the blockchain, but as soon as they're approved, they are written into the blockchain and therefore you will find your transaction if there was a real blockchain there. I am 110% uh, sure uh, that there's no blockchain in the OneCoin system. It's running on uh, what's called a SQL um, TX, TXO system. Um, with some kind of scripting mining. Uh, I haven't figured that part out, but it's definitely not a blockchain. I never picked up when um, you, you first started speaking. When did Dr. Ruja initially contact you? I actually couldn't hear at the time when you said. Oh, sorry, I'll just unmute you. <clears throat> All right. Uh, it wasn't Dr. Ruja, it was a recruitment company uh, in Japan. 
Uh, however, this recruitment company has several ties to OneCoin and has contacted several other people uh, because the, the blockchain community is at its highest levels very, very, very small. I have contacts with most people that are running any type of blockchain software. I have them uh, connected to me via uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and so on. I know who these people are, and three of them have come forward and said that they've also been contacted, and they also have the same information that I have. So they've also talked to the authorities about this. Um, so there are other people uh, that can verify the exact same information that I'm, I'm sitting with, uh, and this was on the uh, th uh, that recruitment company called me for recruitment to be the global uh, CTO of OneCoin uh, the 29th of September 2016. 29th of September 2016. The f September the, the 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 switch on of the new blockchain was the first of October 2016. Right. Right. Okay. Well, there we have it. Um, thank, thanks for that, Bjorn. Really appreciate it. Um, so it's all yours. Yeah. Do you know what? Um, I've been listening to this. Uh, I've, there's a few people I recognize also on this call, actually. But uh, uh, I, I didn't actually go public when I left the, the OneCoin. Um, I actually stopped promoting OneCoin around few months ago, you said tw towards the end of December, you could say. Um, I did a training in Bangkok. I was actually one of the few people that did a training in the Bangkok event uh, from Europe. Um, but the reason I stopped promoting is because um, there, was, there was about four or five key things that really happened in December. Uh, number one, um, I actually met... Um, because I, I, I knew this gentleman called Judica from Tanzania. I actually met him in Dubai. I was in Dubai. I'm in Dubai quite regularly. Uh, and it was just shocking the way he described what happened in the uh, 3,000 people event. Uh, so that really made me get scared about building a business in this, in this business. The second one was um, one of the top leaders actually telling me on Facebook. And I, won't, I, won't, I will not mention that name. Um, but he mentioned that there was no blockchain before October the 1st. So a lot of people say, is there a blockchain now? I don't really look at it that way. I look at it as I was, I, I was doing a business for a year and I believed there to be a blockchain. I pitched the business believing there was a blockchain. So if there was no blockchain before, what was, what was I promoting? What were people promoting? Um, the fraud case was something else. I mean, a lot of these things were hidden away. They were online in places. But in December, I started to really dig more into these sort of things. And a lot of people will, tend, will tell you uh, because people are doing businesses, they've joined another business, so they're promoting, they're taking OneCoin people. But that is not the case. See, I actually stopped promoting OneCoin. I, yes, I, I started a new business. However... Most of the OneCoin people I didn't really even talk to. Uh, so I think there's a people are in a bubble. They're in denial. A lot of leaders are in denial. They're fed information which they believe. And all I would say to everybody is they should do their own independent research. It's these investigations that I heard. You see, what you're talking about, Kieran, Judica told me, this is, this, these were his words. He's a leader who has 3,000 people in an event. And he said the World Bank got involved to close down the Tanzania bank account. And the police in the cell, when they were interviewing him, told him that. So if the World Bank were getting involved to close down a bank account, then something major is taking place. I don't know what it is, how deep it is, but it, it was deep enough for me to say, listen, I can't promote this business anymore. I don't bash the business. I don't talk about it. I... This is the first place probably I've spoken to anyone on a public forum about it. A lot of people are going to ask for proofs and these, but I tell you, there are so many information out there, uh, but one has to 
take that information and really understand. The 17th of December was this event, 3,000 people in one room. When I heard that, that I was, it really shocked me, you know? Um, and I know that those 3,000 people all left the business. None of them are promoting this business. Um, so they also were told there is an investigation globally. So there are more than UK police involved. It can't just be because people are mis-selling the business everywhere. It doesn't make sense that that is the only reason. There are mis-selling businesses all over the place, but something is taking place. What it is, who's involved, I don't know. But I wanted to protect myself. I told the people that I was involved in. A lot of people didn't want to listen to me. Um, so it's, you know, it's really up to them. But I, what I would say is people should really dig deep and open their eyes because a lot of leaders are, their eyes are not open and you know, we can take money, but that's not the way the business is. It's, 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 that's, this is people's hard earned money. Um, so that's, that's all I wanted to say. And, and, and I'm, and I'm really glad from a, from a point of view that I'm no longer promoting this business um, because I just feel content that, I am not involved in it. And if anybody, you know, is what you're, what you're doing, you're sharing some information with people, it's up to them to decide whether what's right or wrong or whether they should follow or not. So thank you for, thank you for, your, for your time. Let me skip forward to, to the, uh, the end. The news on Daniel Grennan, by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but on December 17th, he and Judicus, uh, Judicus Greatness, who was a Tanzania one coin leader, um, had a presentation that they were giving in Tanzania and the Steinkeller brothers were supposed to get there. Now, only three weeks prior to that uh, was when the Bank of Tanzania had shut down and frozen one coin accounts. Um, so the undercover police had gone to this event in Tanzania and after the event had surrounded Judicus and Daniel Grennan, who is a top leader who came from uh, Organo Gold, who was you know, doing 250,000, blah, blah, blah um a month and uh they arrested them and they took them to they took them to the jail and you know grennan was worried because at first everyone was in plain clothes and he's like dude we're getting hustled we're getting rolled and uh but they go they went to the jail and so some agents sat him down interrogated him for several hours and said uh you know are you with this ims company now on the flyer for the tanzania event in dar es salim on December 17th, uh, it said Stein Kellers, you know, top leaders, one coin. It said uh, Judicus Greatness, and it said uh, Daniel Brennan, and underneath their name, it said IMA. Well, someone had reported uh, that these guys were part of one coin, which was part of IMS. Now, IMS was International Marketing Services, and that's what uh, the Bank of Tanzania account was held under. In fact, it was in the name of Frank. Uh, Ricketts wife and so that account what, what these guys these agents these uh, police that had sat Grennan down said was that look we, we froze tens of millions of dollars tens of millions of dollars or euros whatever in this bank account and we've tried to contact the company OneCoin and they would not return our calls and We've contacted and left messages and emails for the compliance department, et cetera, and they're not returning our calls. Think of a company that has tens of millions of dollars that's frozen in an account because it got shut down on suspicious of, uh, suspicion of illegal money laundering, and uh, they don't contact the bank and be like, hey, by the way, let me clear this up. I got about $30 million in that bank. Let me see what I can do. Um, but that wasn't the case. So Daniel Grennan and Judicus Greatness had to spend the night with 42 other individuals, all black. The, Grennan was the only white dude in the, in the entire uh, cell. And he was in there with people that were accused of rape, people that were accused of murder, thieves, blah, 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 et cetera. It was crazy. Um, he had one call. He called Christian Steinkeller and said, dude, I'm in fucking jail and uh, I'm scared for my life. In Tanzania, there's a three to five year minimum sentence for Ponzi fraud. And Steinkeller actually answered, by the way, he was like, I wonder if Steinkeller, 
uh, Stefan and uh, Christian actually saw a big red flag being that Tanzania had just closed those accounts three weeks ago and it was still fresh in their mind. Um, what's the point? The point is, is that uh, one coin is being investigated around the world as a fraud. In Italy, it's already been ruled a, a, an illegal pyramid scheme. If anyone is promoting one coin in, in uh, Italy, for instance, you can be subject to a fine of up to $5 million. 